This one's called Mad Gab. Let's see what's going on. So it's one of these things where you sound out the words that you see or sound out the, the whatever's on the screen and unmute yourself and call it out when you have what it actually is saying. Um, Katie says that the winner is going to get nine fancy cheeses on a golden platter served to you and six of your best friends by three of the leading epidemiologists in full PPE. I don't know if that's actually true or just kind of Katie's imagination, but I have sort of a feeling about that. All right, so here is the um, uh, sample. We shy were there. And the answer is wish I were there. Answer, here's the next one, ready? So unmute yourself and scream out the answer when you've got it. Nachos. You got it, who was that? Abby C. Abby, you got it, good. Ready, who's gonna get the next one? Unmute yourself, anybody got it? I can't get it. You got it, Pastor Bradley? No, I don't. It's an elbow calls. It's an elbow calls. It's, it's an elbow calls. All right, I'm just gonna give us the answer. I'm sorry to say. So one of you has it and is just sitting there thinking these people are really not very bright. It's a noble cause. Oh, wow. That wasn't easy. That was not easy, people. Okay, how about this? Baking oh, powder. I got it. Baking I powder? It. Yes, baking powder. Who was that? Good, Ezra. Ezra, good. All right, ready? Oh, I got it. Who's got it? We've got uh, to leave. Got to leave. We say that again, Ezra. We've got to leave. We've no, got to leave. what? I think it's we've got to believe. To believe. All right. How about this one? Eskimo kiss. Oh, good. Eskimo kiss. Good. Single link. Anybody? Uh, I don't know. That wasn't very good. Okay, we'll try this one. We the people. Yep, yeah, oh, that's good. Good, good. I was good. Thinking, okay. Close on that one. We're dead. It. <laughs> I don't know. Don't be too hard headed. Oh. Be too, too hard headed. Wow, that's hard. Mortuary. Oh, good. Oh, wow. you, Annika. Good, Annika. Good. good job. Oh, I got it. No use at all. No use at all. Good. Got this one. Nature calls. Nature calls. Very good. Here's our bonus. Add up all your points. I think I've got about two. Oh, my goodness.
Got the last part, but I don't know the first part. Ready? Ah. Wow. I had solution, but an ultimate. An ultimate. Ah. Wow, that was really hard. Okay. She's she's messing with us. Um, welcome, uh, seventh and eighth graders. I hope um, that you've had a chance to turn on your screens, your videos, if you can. We'd love to see you, and that you um, are able to change your name so that we can see your um, uh, your grade and your name and your pronouns. All right, let's. Um, why is that not opening up for me? Hold on. Hmm. I think I have to close the other one out. It's not going to let me do that. Sorry. Again, we're having trouble with the technical. <laughs> let me try this. All right. There. Got it. All right, tonight we are talking about the, um, the voices of the disciples. First, just a couple of announcements. Next Sunday is Ash Wednesday. Um, Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the Lenten season. We'll have worship at seven and there's no other confirmation lesson. So just join us at seven. Um, it's just like a Sunday morning worship service from your end, you'll be on YouTube and it's a season to remember your baptism and to be renewed and to, to start again. Um, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. We're talking especially this Lent about this word return. What is it to, to that? Uh, what, what is it God's calling us to return to? How will we return when we can return in person, when we can return from our um, brokenness, when we can return from our isolation? What is it that we're returning to? And what is it God that, that God wants us to return to? So after Ash Wednesday, we still meet. What happens? Keep meeting. We have discussions each night just from 6.30 to 7. And then we worship at 7 online. It's a beautiful worship service, lots of pretty music. And we hope you'll be with us online. But we also hope you'll be with us for confirmation. There's some interesting um, uh, topics that will be coming up. Um, some of them are just these half hours before we go to worship. What happens when we die? A conversation about angels and the devil. Is there really a heaven and a hell? You don't want to miss it. We hope that you'll be with us. So join us um, next Sunday or next Wednesday just for Ash Wednesday worship. But then the weeks after that, again, at 630 for our discussions. All right. Tonight's lesson, Voices of the Disciples. I want you to think a little bit about how you know about people from the past. Maybe you've seen pictures of them. Maybe you've read about them. People could do investigations about them. Maybe we find artifacts like from ancient Greece or Rome or something. Think about what we know about, for instance, Martin Luther King Jr. And how do we know it? Well, usually we can think about his speeches. Um, we've, we know that he was a great orator and we've all heard that I have a dream speech and we know about how he led people with his speeches and what, um, how he motivated people through his speeches. We can read his speeches. We can read his sermons. He was a preacher when we call him Reverend, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. He was a preacher before he was known for anything else. And his sermons are profoundly strong. You can read his sermons. And in fact, he preached once at Gloria Day. That's a picture of him with one of our previous pastors at Gloria Day. You'll see that picture there. So you could read his sermons and you would know about him from that. You know that he marched with those, um, uh, with people. And we could um, interview some of the people still live, of course, who marched with him. We could read about those marches. We could find out about his activism and the ways he led um, the movement for civil rights. Um, we can think about all of the, the ways in which he was involved in the marches. We can read his letters. We could dig up letters that he wrote and there are in um, libraries, things that he wrote and what he was passionate about, what he wanted to share with other people. 
We can visit the places that he lived and where he suffered and where he died. Um, that's a picture of the night he was killed. And then uh, one of his jail cells, you can go see that. It's um, some of the things are still kind of remembered and in, in museums and things. His family members would have memories of him. And sometimes we hear his children interviewed um, or after his, uh, after he died, his wife would often talk about him. And that's, you know, eyewitnesses who knew him. You can also read his arrest records. Um, they would show a different side than probably his family members. They might have different um, descriptions of him than his family members would have that would show a different side of him. There were people in power, some who supported him and praised him and some who opposed him. Many had mixed feelings. Would they all tell the same story? So here's some pictures of some leaders at the time, um, different presidents, and that's um, Senator Humphrey, Vice President Humphrey, um, and that's uh, Lyndon Johnson, and that's uh, Richard Nixon, different people that interviewed him or would have known him, some who praised his work in front of him, but said nasty things about him behind his back. So they wouldn't all tell the same story and they wouldn't tell a consistent story. You could certainly look in newspapers about him. Um, they wouldn't report everything. They would report the things that um, maybe were most newsworthy, but they wouldn't report other things about him. And um, some newspapers would be much more positive about their um, description of him and some would be much more negative. Some people thought he was pushing too hard. Others said he was taking too long. He was being too patient. And there were different reactions from pastors and clergy and different church groups. Some that thought he shouldn't be talking about civil rights. He should just preach the, you know, about the Bible and not really talk about how it affects people today. And others said he's being too, too focused on what the Bible says. He's not doing enough for just talking about human rights and, um, being an activist. Each of the people that would remember him and each of the ways you could research him would be a different style and have a different purpose. They would reflect different times in his life and different perspectives. If you picked up all those different things, newspapers, sermons, speeches, um, descriptions of the marches, interviewed people that marched with him, interviewed people that were in leadership, would those differences of the different perspectives, would they make their, any of their messages less reliable? Or would you even expect all of the voices to say the exact same thing? If we knew that there were people who had praised him and people who had um, condemned him or shunned him, we would guess that they would describe him in different ways. They would say the exact same thing. And what if, we had waited until now to tell anything about Martin Luther King. What if it hadn't been remembered at the time and there were no newsreels, but now looking back, those of us who could remember when he was alive could tell stories. But what if the whole world had waited that long before they had started writing anything down on paper about his life? Oops, I went backwards. The New Testament tells the story of the early church, what the earliest people that uh, experienced and knew about Jesus believed about him and how they envisioned God's work happening in them through Jesus. You've seen the list there of those um, books that are part of the New Testament. We call them the voices of the disciples. There are many books and there are different styles. They're written in different styles. Some of them are letters. Some of them are gospel stories, like a life story. And some are history. Some are visions of God's power. And they're written from over an 80 year spread beginning um, probably at least 30 years after Jesus died. We don't know for sure, but um, if Jesus died back here, in, if you look on this timeline, in the late 20s or around the year 30 or perhaps just a year after, we think that Paul's writings and a lot of Paul's books are that this first big group at the bottom of the, um, 
the thing between 50 and 70 there. The first Thessalonians, Galatians, Philemon, Philippians, some of those writings. And then a few other of the letters, everything below the um, timeline here are some of the letters that were written. And the gospel writers and the um, and Luke, who also writes more of a um, after after Jesus gospel was the story of Acts, the stories of Christians, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and then uh, in Acts. And then Revelation was the vision that I think you talked about last week. Then you can see some of these other letters. So they were written in all different kinds of time and for different purposes and in different, uh, from the different voices, different people telling the story. So there's gonna be a variety of perspectives and opinions and ideas about Jesus described in all of those writings. And again, they had different purposes. Some were sermons, some were letters to very specific people and some were letters written to a more generic group of people. Some were actually written from prison, as we know some of Martin Luther King's writings were in prison. And there's several different authors that are included. Those, all those writings have different styles and, and perspectives from different times, and they're not all consistent. Do the differences make their message any um, less reliable or more reliable? Would you expect all of the voices to say the exact same thing? Um, would some of the voices be more critical than others? In fact, we have these 27 books in the New Testament, but scholars have found other letters and stories of Jesus that are not included in those 27 books. There's other perspectives, other voices. Some of them describe Jesus more miraculously and more mystically, like he was more of a magician almost, and that he could, he, he seemed a little less human in some of the other stories that aren't included. So why were those perspectives not included? Why were they not included in these 27 books? But of the 20, in the, in the 27, they do offer us a message of who the church has continued to say Jesus is, and how the people who followed him understood um, the news of the good news of his life, death, and resurrection, who he was, and what his life meant for us. Um, they were written to real communities and uh, often about real events that changed the lives of those first followers. Sometimes the messages that we read don't seem very relevant or applicable to to us, to our life, and our problems, but. I always think it's amazing to realize in spite of that, we have faith today. We have a church today. We come together. We baptize people today because of what they, what they taught us, because of the stories and the, the messages that they had. Tonight, you're going to take a deeper dive into the other letters. So if you look at all the different sections of the New Testament that we have, biography books, the history book. Paul's letters, which you looked at a couple of weeks ago, prophecy is this revelation book. Now tonight we're going to look at the other letters that are included, not written by Paul, but written maybe um, by some of the other apostles, John, Jude, Peter, James, and then this book of Hebrews. And um, we're not really sure um, whether where that came from, who, who wrote it, although there's different um, opinions and different ideas about that, but it was a letter written to the Hebrews at that time. Each of them has different perspectives. And again, there's some messages within them that we might say, I don't even like that verse, or that verse doesn't even seem to apply to me. But there are also little gems within the, these books that are beautiful and that, that do tell us things that we hold on to and that help us have a sense of who we believe Jesus is and what we believe God was doing through Jesus for us. So we're gonna invite you to take a look at them tonight and see if you can find anything in there that helps you experience Jesus more fully. All right, Pastor Bradley, are you ready to send us out into small groups? <laughs> 